Hi, and welcome to the functional strength class. We're going to start out with some exercises uh, for warm up. Uh, most of these exercises are going to be uh, pertaining to uh, getting good breath in and out while we gain some mobility and some motor control. So, why don't we start with some breathing first? That's going to be the first uh, order of business because as we go through the workout, uh, if you're finding yourself trying to either hold your breath or having a hard time balancing, sometimes just slowing things down and breathing is going to get you a little bit more out of the exercise. It's going to give you a little more control and drive a little bit of a better uh, response to, to the movement. So um, why don't we start with a full kneeling position. So we're going to square up with our knees slightly outside of our hips. And we're going to try to get as tall as we possibly can in this position and then bring your toes together. So I'll turn to the side so you can kind of see that my toes are together, my knees are slightly wider than my hips, I'm getting a good solid base position. So from here, I'm going to wrap our uh, right arm in front of our rib cage, take your left arm and place it behind your back. I want to have no space in here. And I just want you to go through some breath cycles. So it's breathe in through your nose out through your nose. If you go out through, if you're having a, a difficult time breathing out through your nose, you can breathe out through your mouth as well. Breath in, out through your mouth. If you feel uh, in this position, you should feel your ribs expand as you breathe in and out. So I'll show it from the side as well so you can kind of get a, a, a visual of that three-dimensionally. And we'll go through that a uh, number of times. And from there, then what I want you to do is start to incorporate some head turns. So it's breath in, breath out with the head turn. Breath in, breath out with the head turn. Become aware, and you guys, you can keep going as I'm explaining this, but be aware of if you're uh, able to move uh, one way or the other differently. Uh, kind of pick up on those asymmetries. As you keep going through this, you can switch your arms after a few. So it's. Breath in, breath out, breath in, breath out, alternating sides. Again, with the arm change, you're going to feel maybe one side feels a little bit more free than the other side. You got to take note of that. Uh, and then as you feel more comfortable with moving your head, which you sh still should be doing here, uh, we're going to go ahead and start to turn our shoulders. So the first thing that you want to move is your neck and then your shoulders second. So it's. Breath in through your nose, turn the head on the exhale, and then a slight shoulder turn. Try to increase the amount of turn every time without forcing anything, okay? One thing we want to try to drive is quality movement. If we're forcing things, you're going to either compensate or kind of create a little bit more of a sympathetic drive. And I don't want to use too many technical terms, but that's more of your fight or flight kind of stage. And we don't want fight or flight right now. We want rest, digest, relax be kind of more prepared for the workout that's coming up. So do about five on that side, five on the opposite side with the head turn and the shoulder turn. And just get uh, that breathing set, which is going to be really important through this stressful time. Then we can move on to an ankle mobility drill. So I want you guys set up in a uh, open half kneeling stance. So if our regular half kneeling stance is our foot, knee, and hip in alignment, and our back, knee, and ankle, and hip in alignment as well, I want to change that so that my, my front foot is open and, and pointed out. Okay, from here, you can have, if you have a half foam roller, that's great. If not, you can place anything underneath your toes just to elevate that foot up a little bit and kind of lock your ankle into the most, uh, what's called dorsiflex position, which means the most flexed position in that front ankle. Okay, your back foot's going to be turned in towards the midline of your body. We're going to, again, get tall through the back hip. Head is going to be pressed up to the ceiling, and we're going to use our breath in this as well. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to get into your left ankle, in this case, my left side. So breath in. As I breathe out, I'm getting into that ankle. So my torso and my shoulders can stay squared up to, uh, in front, but I'm driving my hips over to get into this front ankle. You might feel a little bit of a stretch in your hip. That's fine. But try to reposition yourself so you're exhausting all the range of motion, which you still should be going through reps here, uh, all the range of motion in that front ankle. So do about 10 to 12 reps on that one side. And then you'll switch up and do the other side. So I'm going to place my foam roller or half foam roller, or in this case, if you have a book or a pillow, whatever you're using to elevate your toes. We're going to get, again, tall through the back hip, head to the ceiling, be as tall as you possibly can, 
work the breath, breath in, breath out as I get into the right ankle now. Take note, if you feel like one side's a little better than the other. I know a lot of us are going through some online classes right now. We're also doing a lot less activity maybe than we're normally used to. So you may feel like these are uh, a little tighter than they normally would be. It's important as you guys keep going through that, it's important to free up our range of motion in our ankle because of all the activities that we do throughout the day, whether it's low level activities and walking, going up steps, or if it's actually getting out for a jog or doing some sprints. It's our ankles are our shock absorbers. If I don't have great range of motion, it's like driving around your car without shocks. So both sides on that, 10 to 12 reps, uh, and then we'll move on to the hip. Okay, moving on now to the hip. We're gonna start out with some uh, stretches that will incorporate a little bit of the front part of the hip as well as the back part of the hip. So if we had our open half kneeling stance before, let's kind of square that up now and we'll be facing straight ahead. Um, we're going to keep our knee underneath our hip and sometimes just getting yourself into the proper pelvic position might even give you a little bit of mobility and, and stability challenge. So, um, you know, let's not hang on our ligaments here. Let's make sure we're up nice and tall. You guys should be in that good tall half kneeling. Your knee is directly below your hip, which is your hip is directly below your shoulder and your head floating on top of that. So let's just work through just a slight little stretch forward and back and I'll show that from the side so you can get a little bit of a better, better view here. You only get about 10 degrees of extension through your hip here so it shouldn't look like this. If it looks like this we're probably getting more through our lower back than we are through our hips. So stay up nice and tall, breath in as you breathe out, a little bit of a stretch through here. Breath in, breath out. I'll show it from the other side. We're going to do about 10 to 12 reps on each side. Stay up nice and tall. Breath in, breath out. Again, being careful not to get into our low back here, staying tall, making sure our knee is stacked below our hip and below our shoulders. We'll do about 10 to 12 reps on each side there. Okay, so that addressed the front part of the hip. Now we want to make sure we're addressing the back part of the hip. I'm just going to adjust my microphone here and get set up on my back. So from here, if you have a strap, great. I'm kind of trying to do this workout with the least amount of equipment, just in case you don't have anything at all. Um, we're going to start out with one leg straight. In this case, my right leg is going to be completely straight. I'm going to pull my left knee to my chest. And then from here, I'm just going to extend my heel to the ceiling and right back down. I'm gonna breathe out on the stretch. And let's try to do this without forcing the stretch. If we're forcing things, most likely the hamstring is gonna fight back. I don't want that to happen. Breath in, remember that deep belly breathing, and I'm gonna do 10 reps on the left, and I'll also do 10 reps on the right. Breath in, breath out. Breath in, breath out. And that's a very passive type of way to do it because I'm pulling my knee to chest. Now we're gonna take that to another level where I'm gonna make it a little more active. So now one leg's gotta stay completely still as I drop the opposite leg down to the ground. So I may still feel a little bit of a stretch or I might feel more of a core control challenge. Either way, I'm working on the pattern of hip separation. Okay, moving on from the ankle and the hip, we're working our way up the body. So the next uh, area of the body that we want to focus on mobility would be the T-spine or thoracic spine or our upper back. Most of our day-to-day -day is kind of in this flexed posture, whether it's watching television, driving cars, or texting. Uh, we want to try to expand through our chest and have a little bit better um, extension and rotation through our T-spine. The window into this is the breathing, right? Our lungs are right underneath our rib cage. Our diaphragm is attached to that, which is, has a direct correlation to our core. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we're breathing correctly on these drills, or just like on the hamstring stretch, we're gonna be fighting it, maybe even make things tighter. So uh, we'll set up in side lying. Okay, you can use this as a pillow, or if you have an actual pillow or book, and you're gonna set yourself up where your top leg 
is going to be in the front, and I'm going to hook that knee with my bottom arm. So my left arm, in this case, is going to hook underneath my right leg. Now from here, what I'm going to do is take my thumb, place it right at my sternum, okay? And then I want to visualize my, my uh, nose, my chin, and my thumb in the same line. And from here, let's breath in, breath out. Just get a good idea of what a baseline breath should feel like. And then after that, start to open up a little bit. Each breath, try to drive a little further without feeling tension. Right about here is where I'm starting to feel it. So I'm actually going to back up an inch, work through a few more belly breaths, and see if I can access a little more comfortably. Right? So if I'm in an uncomfortable place and my breathing is starting to be restric restricted, that's no good. I'm, I've gone too far. I want to try to get to a place right before that and work on my breathing. Okay, and then we'll switch up and we would do the other side in that case. Once we finish with the T-spine alone, then we're going to want to incorporate the lower part of the body. We've already stretched the hips a little bit, but now let's pull that into some of the T-spine drills. So we're going to take our top arm, grab the laces of our bottom leg, and try to get yourself into a position where you're getting a little bit of a, a challenge on the, the quad, but not so much where it's starting to restrict you and change your breathing. So I'm just going to work on some baseline breaths on the side. You can do about two or three. And then start to open up, just like we did on the, the one where we worked on just the T-spine alone. And the same thing applies here, but now I'm pulling in the lower part of the body. Now that we've addressed the ankle, the hip, and the T-spine, let's move up to our feet. So we're going to move to the toe touch progression, which is going to be uh, useful to have a little bit of elevation. So whether it's a 2 by 4 a thick book, one of these half foam rollers, which are great. Um, either way, the point of this is just to get our toes up off the ground and our heels on the floor. So from here, we're just going to work on a toe touch. The elevation of the toes, what that challenges is our balance a little bit. So it changes the way that I'm controlling my ability to reach down and touch my toes. If I can't touch my toes, if I get to about here, still touch by bending your knees. Try to bend your knees less and less every time. I'm breathing out on the touch. Reach up overhead. Breath out on the touch. Okay, once we get about 10 or 12 reps there, then we're going to go ahead and set up where one foot is over the front the back foot is going to stay where it was. So if my right foot is on the ground, I'm kind of biasing this back hip to get the hinge. So it's reach up overhead, breath in, breathe out. Try to touch your thumbs to your shoulders as you go through the path, right? Rather than making it this like bowing type motion, let's kind of keep our hands nice and close to our body. Breath in, breath out. We'll do about eight to 10 reps on our right hip. And then you'll go ahead and switch up and do the opposite side as well. So right leg in front, left leg back, reach up overhead, breath in, breath out on the way down. Breath in on the way up, breath out on the way down. And from there, 
We're going to go ahead and lift the heels and elevate them up. Let's incorporate the squat pattern into this as well. Um, to do that, we're going to reach both arms up overhead. We're going to reach down, touch our toes, and from here, I'm going to drop my hips in with chest up in this position here, try to get as tall as I possibly can. Then I push my hips back up tall, and I'm going to bring my hands through that same pattern again. So it's hands up overhead, breath in, breath out on the way down, knees go out, elbows stay in, I'm keeping my posture as best I can, and I'm bringing my hands right through. The next progression on the toe touch is going to be to add a little bit of uh, T-spine work into this so I can go back to my toes elevated and heels down. I'm going to reach the arms up overhead and just take my left arm and I'm going to tuck it behind my back. From here, now I'm only using my right arm to go through that pattern. At this bottom position, that's when I switch. So I switch arms, come back up, reach the arms overhead, breath in, breath out as I come down, switch the arms at the bottom. Reach the arm overhead, breath in. As I come down, my spine is unloaded, so different things can happen with my shoulders. I can get this hand a little further up my back. Once I complete that with the arms, I'm going to add that into my squat pattern. So it's feet together, toes are going to be down, heels are elevated, reach the arms up overhead. We're going to go ahead through the shoulders, so thumbs touch the shoulders, breath out on the way down. I'm going to drop my hips here, and I'm going to reach my left arm up, reach my right arm up, and I'm coming back out of the pattern. So it's hands overhead. Touch the shoulders on the way down, touch my toes, drop my hips, chest is up, reach the left arm up, reach the right arm up with a slight rotation as much as I can handle, hands back on the ground, and I'm back up through, hands overhead. So I just did two starting from the left, on the next one maybe I'll start and do two starting with the right side. You can even add a further progression of just going both hands up at the end and coming out of that squat. If you're having a little bit of discomfort with your knees on that, you've gone a little too far, stick with the other ones where we're doing just the toes up. Now that we've finished our kind of functional warm-up, we're going to go on to some more functional movements, but maybe a little bit slightly more challenging and more driven towards motor control and balance. So we'll start out with a four-way hip drill. So it's going to be uh, balancing on one foot. So in this case, I'm on my right foot. The whole time, I'm going to make sure I'm not collapsing my arch. Big toe is on the ground. I'm gripping the floor with my foot. This foot does not touch the ground at all the whole time. So I'm going to do 40 reps, 10 single leg squats, Balancing the whole time, so I'm only doing a few just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to do uh, 10 single leg deadlift. Then I'm going to do 10 where I'm doing a grid skate. Two, three, that counts as one. One, two, three, counts as two. So I'm really feeling it at this point in my hip and my, my calf possibly, maybe even the bottom of my foot. And then the last one is going to be a rotational movement. So it's just going to be a drop and drive, drop and drive up and across. If you can't get through that last one, 30 reps is fine. It's again the single leg squat, single leg deadlift, as well as the grid skate, and then that last rotational movement for 40 reps on the right, 40 reps on the left. Get to it.
Now that we've hit the balance portion of the workout, we're going to hit on some core stuff. So we've done a lot of mobility so far, a lot of motor control. This is going to be some static core strength at this point in the workout. So we'll start um, with a plank position. We've all done the plank so, uh, at this point in the gym. Um, one thing I want to be thinking about when I do my plank is making sure that my uh, I'm creating like almost like railroad tracks. So my hands and my elbows are lined up, my feet are together, and I'm kind of dropping my heels deep into this, into my ankles. So it's not up in here, it's going to be dropping deep into that. Now from here, the other thing to kind of think about is head position. Am I in the right spot? Am I neutral? Um, you can kind of rotate your thumbs out slightly to get your shoulders involved a little bit. The other thing you're going to want to maybe do is just check your pelvis, kind of tuck down as far as you can go, arch your back as far as you can go. Just try to find out what neutral is for you. If you're having a hard time doing that just in this position, you can put one knee on the ground and do that same thing. Like where is your pelvis comfortable and then set your feet. Okay, that's going to give you the right position to hold this, this plank and then go ahead and drive your elbows towards your feet. That's going to change it all. We're going to hold that for 30 to 40 seconds. Now that we've finished the linear plank, we're going to go to a side plank. So we'll start this in a regressed position where our feet are tucked up behind our back. Um, we're going to keep our knees bent to the first one, just to make sure we're in good alignment. If you're just kind of hanging on your ligaments here and in a, in a bad position, we're not really doing what this is intended to do. So we want to get um, the basics down first. We're going to go ahead and use our knee as the pivot point. Just go ahead and drive the knee into the ground to get yourself up into this straight position. So it should look as if, if you were standing on the ground, you should be in perfect alignment here. None of this stuff, none of this stuff. Right, if we're doing that, we're not really ready for the straight legged version. So just getting in here, 20 to 30 second holds. If you're ready, we'll go to the full plank. For the plank, we're going to do left and right side. So let's go ahead and switch up, do the other side, starting with the regressed position. Nose is going to be in alignment with our belly button and the middle of our knees. To the straight legged version with both legs stacked. Again, should look like I'm standing on the ground if I would have flipped myself straight up and down. We've done linear core, we've done some lateral core, now we're going to do kind of moving and dynamic core. So this one is going to be a push up to plank position. We're going to start out in our kind of push up plank where our hands are on the ground. Again, you can check your pelvic position, making sure you're at neutral, whatever's comfortable for you. Go ahead and stack your feet together. Pelvis should be tucked slightly. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and bring my feet slightly outside of my shoulders width. And then I'm dropping down to my elbow. It's left elbow first, right elbow second, left hand to right hand. And the whole time, I'm going to do this with a minimal amount of movement through my hips. You do have to drop and dip slightly because your shoulder is now lower on the one side compared to the other. But it shouldn't be rotating. Right? Your hips should not rotate. They should be If the hip drops, it should be in alignment with that side shoulder. So in this case, my left hip is lower because my left shoulder's lower. And we're going to alternate the starting hand. So if I go left, right, left, right, I'm going to go right, left, right, left. And we'll progress through that for 30 to 40 seconds. 
Next, we're going to go through some movement prep exercises to kind of jack up our heart rate a little bit, as well as go through kind of a functional walkthrough of some of the movements that we're going to do later on in the workout. So uh, we'll start with a hand walk, everyone's favorite. Uh, feet are shoulders width apart, hands are going to be on the ground. You're going to walk yourself out without swaying your hips back and forth. Reach your hands out overhead, and then go ahead and ankle walk up. Get your feet as close to your hands again, and then take a big step back with your right side, big step, best step back with your left side and push your hands back to your feet. So if I do that again, I'm going to want to take a step back with the opposite foot. So again, hand walk out. Try to challenge yourself and get your hands further over your head each time. Feet walk up, take a big step back with the left, big step back with the right, and push my hands back to my feet. With movement prep, you can do a lot of change to your movement and improve quality by really trying to get better and better with every movement. Don't just settle for the way you do the first rep is the way you do it the rest of the time. It should improve, whether that's just you improving your ability to do it, just neurologically, or you actually kind of pushing yourself a little. The next exercise for movement prep is the inverted hamstring stretch. So we're going to go ahead and go thumbs out to the sides. We're going to go ahead and pull our shoulder blades down and back. So we're trying to get kind of some retraction back and pull the shoulder blades together to set the upper body. From there, we're going to slightly bend the right leg and go ahead and push your heel back behind you for a little bit of a hamstring stretch and balance challenge and come right back up. So we're going to try to stay long from our ear to shoulder to hip straight through that back foot. The other thing you're going to want to do is kind of drive your heel back to the wall behind you rather than just kind of like teeter over the top. So we're going to hit about 10 to 12 reps on the right side and then we'll go ahead and switch up 10 to 12 reps on the left side. All right? If here to here is all you got today, I'm good with that. I'd rather see that than getting to here and then seeing you flex at the spine. Let's try to keep everything long, kick your heel back, get as long from the top of your head straight through to your <clears throat> The next movement prep exercise we're going to att attempt is the lateral lunge. So for this one, we're going to set our feet in advance. So I want the toes straight ahead. And with this, we're going to go ahead and set our hips down and back. So the hand walk, as well as the inverted hamstring, those are more linear type movements. This is going to be a, more of a lateral type warm up. We'll do this one and a drop step lunge as well to hit the outside part of the hip. So this one will focus on the inside part. We're going to sink our hips, almost like there's a little chair behind your foot. Try to sit in the chair and then come right back up tall again. Same thing, go to the opposite side. Sit back, sit in a little chair, and right back up. Common mistakes here, people get to a certain point where they start feeling that tightness and then they flex at the spine. I'm okay with a lean forward, right? It'd be kind of weird if we're straight up and down, but it shouldn't be any kind of rounding of the back. I want to load into the hips. If I start to round my spine, I lose the stretch that I'm trying to accomplish. I want to sink back, chest up, stay long from the top of your head, back to your tailbone. We'll go through that, 10 to each side. Next exercise is the drop step lunge. We're going to start with our right foot out in front. I'm going to bring my hands out in front in this position. Take our left leg and you're going to place it behind your right foot, kind of even further across to your left, uh, right hip. So I'll show it from this angle just so you can see. Um, my toe is going to be pointed straight ahead with this toe pointed straight ahead, but my torso is actually twisted up into this position so that when I drop down, I should feel a big stretch in this glute. Hands are out in front. I'm going to drop in and drive through the heel, front heel that is. Most of my weight, let's say about 85% of my weight should be on my front foot, back leg nice and light. So it's here, sink, back up, sink, and back up. If I want to add a little bit more of a challenge, I could go here and then even drive my hands in this position. You're going to feel a much bigger stretch because that uh, kind of chain 
reaction of function goes from this hip across to the opposite side shoulder. So if I, the further I reach in that direction, the more I'm going to feel that in my hip. Same thing here, left foot in front, right leg behind, toes are pointed straight ahead. I'm winding myself up, hands in front, back up. Long from the top of the head to the tailbone. If I want a little bit more of a challenge, throw the hands towards the hip that's being stretched. The next thing we're going to want to do is incorporate in some more movement skills. So we'll do a linear skill and then we'll do a lateral skill. The linear skill is just going to be basically working on your skip, depending on how much room you have. I don't have a lot of room here on camera. This is probably about the amount of space you're going to have at home. So we could just work on elbows back, knees up and toes up. A couple of things to think about here. I don't want to bring my hands past my eyes. I want to make sure my elbows are driving back. The other thing I can think about is my foot strike. So when my foot hits the ground, it shouldn't be too much toes, also shouldn't be too much heels, should be more through the midfoot, right, that kind of bouncy part of the foot. And I'm just going to work through that, and we can do that for about four to five minutes, just working on improving that skill.
Then we get to a lateral progression for movement skill, which is going to be our lateral uh, march. So it's going to be elbows are driving back, staying as tall as I can. Same concepts apply. Don't let your hands pass your eyes. Be driving in your elbows back. The tendency here as we go sideways is to kind of open up our elbows. Let's try to keep them in nice and close to our ribs. And we're going to move through by lifting our quads, right? Lifting the quads up, almost like if there was a little string attached to my heel. And when I lift my quad up, it pulls that heel up towards my hamstring, not towards my butt, and not out in front. So we'll go through lateral progression, four to five minutes, right and left. After completing the movement skill portion of the workout, now that brings us to our strength circuit. So I'm gonna show the circuit in its entirety, and then we're gonna kinda of break it out as you go through it. So there are gonna be four exercises. We're gonna do something for lower push, 
We're going to do something for upper pull. We're going to do something for uh, lower pull. And we're also going to do something for upper push. So uh, the first exercise we'll do, and hopefully you have something that you can elevate yourself up on, or if you want the regression type version, we can do it in a split stance. So it's the rear foot elevated split squat or the split stance. So we can elevate, in this case, my right foot up on the box. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and place my hands behind my head. Okay, if you have a hard time with that, I'm fine with you up in front. You can even add load to this if it's a, a backpack with books in it, or maybe you have some dumbbells or a kettlebell, something to hold on to. Um, body weight sometimes can be fine, especially if we slow down the tempos. So toe is elevated, the front heel is going to stay flat. As I drop down, I want to maintain my posture as I drop in and drive through my heels. I want you to think of the tempo here as a three, zero, one tempo. Zero meaning there's no break at the bottom. So it's one, two, three, up and one. One, two, three, up and one. One, two, three, up and one. I'll do that for a set of 10 on the left, and then I'll place my left foot up on the box. Now I'm training my right side. A couple key things to remember, shoulders down and back, keeping your posture. One, two, three on the way down, drive through the heel to come up. So after our lower push exercise, we'll move on to an upper pull. Most of you at home should have some type of band that you can strap to something to pull on. If you don't, you can always do a medicine ball slam here for a pull. I'm okay with that. Um, but most of us are probably going to have some type of setup where we can do this. So in this case, I'm holding on to the gray cook bands. I'm going to use the pads here and I'm pulling my elbows in towards my body. It's back in three, one, two, three, in and one, one, two, three, in and one. One, two, three, in and one. So slow the tempo down, three, zero, one, meaning three seconds uh, back, no pause, pull forward. So the third exercise in the circuit is going to be our lower body pull, which is going to be a deadlift type pattern. We'll go through, similar to our inverted hamstring stretch that we did in the warm up. Now we're holding a weight, could be a medicine ball, could be a backpack full of books or anything heavy in your house, something that has some consistency to the weight for safety. And we're going to go ahead and keep our posture. And I'm uh, going to give me myself a little bit of a slight knee bend in the down leg. And I'm just pushing my heel back behind me to drive up and through for the single leg deadlift. So it's down in one, two, three, no pause, back up in one, one, two, three, and right up, one two, three, and right up. I'm going to try to balance on that foot the whole time. I'll show it from the left. Remember, big toe is on the ground, a little bit of weight on the outside part of the foot. Make sure the heel's flat. I'm not just teetering over the top. I'm kind of sinking my hips back, driving the heel back and butt back towards the wall behind me. Stay long from the top of the head to the tailbone. Then our last exercise in the circuit is going to be the upper body push, which in this case will be the push-up. Uh, earlier we did our push-up position. Remember, you can do this in an elevated position. So if you want to make it a little bit easier, you can do it off the side of a bed or something lower like this uh, pad. But we can always put a knee down and just kind of check your pelvic position. With one foot back, I can kind of like get as much extension and as much flexion and then set into that position that's comfortable for you. And then I'm going to do down in three. So one, two, three, and back up in one. So it's down in three, up in one. If I go from the ground, it's the same thing. Down in three, try to tuck the elbows in past the ribs. Let's not be flailing and letting our elbows come out to the sides. We'll try to keep our head in good alignment, make sure we're breathing on the way out, and follow that tempo for more of a challenge.
And that brings us to the cool down. For the cool down, I want you guys to repeat the ankle, hip, and T-spine movements. If you have extra time going through the toe touch progressions, great. Uh, I won't include that on the back end of the video, but you're going to see the repeat of the ankle, hip, and T-spine drills right now so that you guys can get a good, solid cool down. Once we finish with the T-spine alone, then we're going to want to incorporate the lower part of the body. We've already stretched the hips a little bit, but now let's pull that into some of the T-spine drills. So we're going to take our top arm, grab the laces of our bottom leg, and try to get yourself into a position where you're getting a little bit of a, a challenge on the, bot the quad, but not so much where it's starting to restrict you and change your breathing. So I'm just going to work on some baseline breaths on the side. You can do about two or three. And then start to open up, just like we did on the, the one where we worked on just the T-spine alone. And the same thing applies here, but now I'm pulling in the lower part of the body. 